city of Zaharovich in the white Russian province of Mali, lived a humble Yid whose name was David. Hashem benched him and his wife Miriam with his son, whom they named Yehuda. Yehudala was not a regular boy, as you will see. Gasa's birthday's coming up. Please don't tell me I forgot your birthday again. No, you still have a few weeks for that. Ahem. It's Yidla's first birthday tomorrow. Look what I got for him. Um, but you know that's not for his age. I know, but it's good for him to see the Helga Olive Base. Yehudala, come to Tati. Yeah, Tati, come me. You see this? This is an Aleph. Can you say Aleph? Good, and this is Bays. Big. And David went through the Aleph Bays with Yehudala, trying to repeat each letter after his Tati. Miriam, you should have seen how cute Yehudala was trying to repeat each letter after me. Would you like to see? Sure. Watch as I point to each letter and tell him. But instead of waiting to repeat the letters after his father, Yehudala recognized the letters on his own. Aleph. Huh? What is happening? How is this possible? I don't know. Are we dreaming? No, no. It's with our face. Mo, mo. Miriam, we have a special diamond here. I don't want other people to find out about this secret. Yes, but we should not waste his talent either. How about we hire a Malamid to come and teach him at home? Yes, that sounds like a great idea. David found a Malamid to teach Yehudah. So who am I teaching? Oh, and please take the baby out of the room. It's distracting. Ha, but this is who I want you to teach. David, are you making fun of me? You called me all the way here to teach a baby? How old is he? I turned one a few days ago. Wow, I'm not used to seeing a one-year-old talking. Maybe there is a chance that I can start teaching you the first letters of the alphabet. base. But my daddy already taught me all the Aleph Bays. Are you trying to tell me that you already know all the Aleph Bays? What letter is this? Ayin. I give out. Speaking of Ayin, please don't tell anyone what you are seeing here. We don't want any Ayin Hara. Yes, I understand. I would gladly teach your son how to read. The Melamed started teaching Yehudala the Nekudais. Then, Yehudala on his own started realizing how to read. A few weeks later. Listen, David, you have a very special gem here. I really think you need to find a better Melamed to already start teaching Yehudala Chumash. I'll help you find someone. Hi, David. My friend told me you were looking for a Melamed to teach your son Chumash. Yes, yes, come on in. Thanks for coming. Yodala, please come here. Hello, Yodala, you are so cute. So what's your older brother's name? I don't have an older brother. Ha, it's so funny how little boys always think they are the oldest. Where is your brother that I'll be teaching Chumash? Sorry for not being clear. This is my only son. He is the one we wanted you to teach Chumash. Ha, maybe I'll come back in a few years. Please understand. We're dealing with a special child. Bar Hashem, he is ready to start learning Chumash. What can I tell you? I guess I'm already here. I'll try teaching one Pasuk. The new Malamid was shocked to see that not only can Yehudala read, but he also understood everything they were learning. By the time Yehudala was four, he had finished the whole Chumash and began learning Mishnayis. By his Bar Mitzvah, he was familiar with the whole Shas. In those days, there lived a group of people known as the Masculum. The Masculum would secretly try to influence others to learn less Tyra and be more like the guy. When the Masculum heard about Yehuda, they knew that if they could convince Yehuda to join them, he would be a tremendous leader. We must find a way to get Yehuda to us. He has the most brilliant mind. Yes, but what can we do? He's almost always at home, and his father always watches him. I have an idea. Maybe we can quietly slip in one of our pamphlets through his window and hope that he sees it. Sounds like a great idea.
the next morning. Hmm, where did this come from? I don't remember seeing this. Hmm, this doesn't look like Tyra. I should be focused only on learning Tyra. Yehuda would take out the pamphlet once in a while. One day, David went to check up on Yehuda and saw that he was looking at something else, not the Gemara in front of him. Yehuda, what is that? Oh, nothing really. Oi, that's from the Maskilim. That's poison. It sounds all nice, but it's really Tuma. Don't read that. Yes, Tati, you're right. I, I mean, I found this all on the floor, and, and I was curious. Here, give me the pamphlet. About a week later, the Maskilim were talking again. It's time to put the next pamphlet in his window. Yes, I agree. Let's go together this time and watch it. We caught him. I included instructions on how we can get in touch with us if he wants to. Yeah, let's see what happens. Some time passed, and David caught Yehuda reading a pamphlet again. Yehuda, I don't believe it. We spoke about this already. Oh, Tati, I I'm sorry. I won't read them anymore. Here. This time, David sensed that something changed in his son. He gave up the pamphlet, but it seemed to David that Yehuda was already being influenced by what he read. But they did not realize that the situation was worse than they thought. Yehuda was already thinking of joining the Maskelim. One night, Yehuda went to sleep much earlier than usual. A few hours later, he got up and prepared himself to run away. David heard some noise and found Yehuda on his way out of the back door. Yehuda, where are you going? I decided to go to my Maskelim friend. Maskilim? Friends? Oi, Yehuda, you're making a mistake. I'm sure you'll be back and realize that there's nothing better than Tyra. I, I love you, no matter what. Yehuda, I'm so happy you agreed to join us on our trip to Berlin. All the professors are very excited to finally meet you. And so Yehuda traveled to Berlin. Welcome, we are so excited to finally meet you in person. Let me introduce you to the main professor, Professor Hans. Shake hands. What are you doing? Oh, I thought you said we're going to shake hands. No, no, no. Shake Professor Hans' ha hands. Like this? Yeah, hold on. Stretch out your hand. Like this. Hi, Professor Hans. I have Yehuda here, who traveled all the way from Agala. Yeah, what? Is that a name? How about Yaroslav? Now, that's a beautiful name. Yaroslav? Yes, it's a wonderful name. It means glory of the sun. In Berlin, Yehuda, who is now Yaroslav, impressed everyone he met and very quickly rose to the ranks to higher positions. After a few years, even though Yaroslav was still in his teens, he had already surpassed all the professors in Berlin and went on to study in Paris. There, too, he quickly became famous. I 
been given so much respect by all the professors. Just wait until they find out about the two books I am writing. One is on mathematics, and the second is on medicine. I have spent so many hours each and every day writing these two books, and they can't wait to present them to the top professors. And soon enough, Yaroslav went to the top professor in Paris, Professor Frederick. Hi, Yaroslav. What brings you here? I am here to present two books that I have been working on. Let me take a look at them and come back to me tomorrow. The next day. Yaroslav, this is just incredible. These are the best books I've ever read in my lifetime. I would like you to publish these books and I'll take care of all the costs involved. Thanks, I appreciate your kind words, but I am not ready to publish them yet. More and more top professors from all over the world were fascinated by the two books and tried convincing Yaroslav to publish them. But for some reason, he still hesitated. Meanwhile, Yaroslav was getting older, and many professors and scholars tried to set up a shidduch between Yaroslav and their own daughters. They even offered Yaroslav lots of money if only he would marry their daughters. Yaroslav, I want you to meet my daughter. She's a very special girl, and I'm sure you would be very happy with her as a wife. Let's set up a meeting for this afternoon at the gardens behind my palace. Thanks, I am very honored, but what should I talk about? I don't know, usually people talk about family, food, philosophy, those type of things. Okay, thank you. Family, food, philosophy. Later that afternoon. Hi, Yaroslav, I've heard so many things about you and about the books you are writing. Hi, yes, I'm pleased to meet with you. Um, what was I supposed to talk about? Oh, yes, so Fayet, let's talk about family. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No, I'm an only child. Oh boy, that won't work. Um, right, food. So Fayet, do you like French cuisine? Actually, I don't. Oh boy, strike two. What else can we talk about? Oh, yeah, philosophy. So, Fayette, if you had any brothers or sisters, do you think they would like French cuisine? Heh, <laughs> you're being silly. But I want you to know my father's one of the richest people in all of France. And if we get married, you could buy anything you want. You won't have to work for the rest of your life. That sounds amazing. But I don't know. I really don't feel ready to get married. Maybe we should talk again in a few months. Okay, makes sense. You're probably too busy right now. Well, whenever you're ready, I'll still be here. Yaroslav was on his way home from meeting Fayette. Um, Fayette is right. Maybe I should just get married. I would not have to worry about anything. But I just feel this hesitation. Something is holding me back. I don't know what it is. With all these big life decisions to make, Yaroslav suddenly felt a real yearning for his parents. Before I can get married, I must speak to them. I also want to tell them that I'm about to publish two books that were praised by so many professors and scholars. So Yaroslav prepared for a long journey to visit his parents. However, on the way, he had lots of time to think. Maybe my father will appreciate my two books if I just show it to him. I have a better idea. I will first go to my father's Rebbe, the Tzaddik of Liezhne, the Alter Rebbe, and he will surely appreciate my books. I have heard that he's a very smart man. Once he speaks highly about my two books, I'm sure my father will be very pleased. And so Yaroslav changed his plan and instead headed to Liezhne to meet the Alter Rebbe. At long last, he reached the Alto Rebbe show.
In the show, there was a group of Hasidim who were middle of learning. When one Hasid, Rabbi Meisha Meisler, saw the unfamiliar man who just walked into the show, Rabbi Meisha approached him. Hi there, my name is Meisha Meisler. May I ask what your name is? Yes, my name is Yaroslav. Very well, and what brings you here? I would like to speak to the Alter Rebbe. Sure, let me try helping you arrange that. Just wait for me here. There's a man who just came and is asking to meet with you. Yes, yes, please let him in at once. Moshe Meisler tells Yaroslav to enter the Alta Rebbe's room. After a very long time, Yaroslav finally came out. His face was red and he seemed extremely agitated. He kept facing the show back and forth, oblivious to everything and everyone. It was clear that something was really upsetting him. Something was really bothering him. Can it really be? How can it be? All those professors, all that hard work, nothing? Suddenly, without warning, Yaroslav grabbed one of the books he had brought with him and threw it into the furnace at the end of the base mattress. A look of relief spread across his face, but then he resumed pacing back and forth. A minute later, Yaroslav went back to the furnace and threw the second book inside. Then he was finally able to take a seat and calm down. Rabbi Meislich, who had been waiting patiently on the side, decided it was now safe to approach. Are you okay? Well, now I am. It looks like something was bothering you. Do you want to talk about it? Well, I came to show the Alter Rebbe two books which I really worked hard on. For years, day and night, each one was a masterpiece. When I showed the Alter Rebbe my book on mathematics, after quickly looking at five pages, he took out a pencil and drew some lines, and then continued to leaf through the book. The Alter Rebbe then showed me that actually the whole book was based on a mistake made at the beginning of the book, which means the whole book is one whole big mistake. I tried arguing back, but realized the Alter Rebbe was completely right. The Alter Rebbe then picked up the second book, and unbelievably, the same thing happened. He showed me again that the whole book was based on a mistake. The Rebbe was right again. I walked out of the room completely embarrassed and tried to think of any way possible to show that I did not make a mistake. But the more I tried, the more I realized that Alter Rebbe is right. I was shocked. I really felt bad for all the years I spent writing those books. But now they were an embarrassment to me. I had to get rid of them, so I did. Wow, it takes real courage to do what you did, but what will you do now? <laughs> I wish I could speak to the Rebbe again. Would you like to learn with him? Please, it would be the greatest pleasure of my life. I'll see what I can do about it. I will bless you for the rest of my life if you are successful. Ramaisha Mises went back to the Alter Rebbe. Rebbe, the young fellow would like to have the honor to learn with you. Please let him in. The Rebbe learned with Yehuda every single day. In fact, when the Alter Rebbe's son, who would one day become the Metala Rebbe, heard about this, he asked his father. Can I please join the daily learning you do with Yehuda? What you ask is impossible, but in seven weeks you will understand. Seven weeks from that day, the young man suddenly fell sick, and a short time later he passed away. Only after Yehuda passed away did the Alter Rebbe reveal a secret. Yehuda was a Gilgal of Rabbi Elazar ben Derdaya. His neshama came into this world several times. And in each lifetime, he had the same progression. As a young man, he would keep turning in mitzvahs. But then something would happen, and he needed to do teshuva. This time, when the young man came to me, I decided that enough is enough. I refused to let him leave until his neshama had accomplished its final tikkun. And so I learned with him and helped him do teshuva. The Alto Rebbe later gave his son, the Mitzvah Rebbe, the note of everything he had learned with Yehuda. And it was based on these writings that the Mithil Rabbah offered his work, Derek Chaim.